Hi everyone, Lydia Lee here. I'm the founder of Screw the Cubicle and the 90 Day Launch Academy. And I've invited Julie Scully to chat with me today about her journey to build her business in the education sector and what she's learned from the 90 Day Launch program to grow her business from a side hustle into her full-time gig today. I'm so excited to have you here, Julie. Thank you for having me, Lydia. I'm excited too. I know you're a busy gal, and I remember telling you before we started recording, I was like, I need to get a hold of Julie before things get busier for her, which I'm very proud, by the way, of that. Now your high quality problem is saying no <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to more opportunities. But, you know, it, had, it didn't really start that way in the beginning of time. So I want to, you know, talk a bit about that inaugural journey, right? Not just the success story of what's happened, but the the real work. I think the deep work that you've done, right, to make the business where it is today. Um, but let's start by, you know, telling people a little bit more about your business, you know, what you do, why you do what you do, um, who you help, and why you're so passionate about the work that you're doing today. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so um, I started Literacy Impact um, in November 2021, um, after being a deputy principal for many years, and I um, also a learning difficulties consultant. Um, I taught here in Perth and in the UK. Um, and look, I loved being in schools and I loved helping students, um, but I, I needed a new challenge. And I felt that one thing I'm really passionate about is translating the evidence-based research into the classroom. Um, and quite often there's a disconnect between that research. A lot of them are behind paywalls and things like that. Um, and teachers are too busy. They don't have time to filter through what is best practice. Um, and so, yeah, I, I was really, really passionate about starting this myself as a consultant, um, coach, trainer, and I work with schools all over Australia in, in professional learning. Um, I've got online modules and also I do face-to-face -face and Zooms and I coach schools um, over time to, you know, based on uh, literacy um, approach or literacy achievement that they want to change and improve in their school and I take them through the steps to to make that happen um, so yeah it's only been going for a bit over a year now but I absolutely love it and um, yeah I, I I I want to get up every day to to sit at my desk to, to get going because um, I think every it's every child's right to learn to read write and spell um, to the best of their ability and um, I guess it all started for me as a graduate when I had a boy who I'll name as Jacob, who was in year four um, and could barely read a word. Um, and for me, I was, you know, I said to him, I'm going to get you reading by the end of the year. And maybe naively um, at the time, I then went home and I thought, right, how am I going to make this happen? And I realised I didn't have it in the mental toolkit about how to make that happen. Um, because at university, unfortunately, I hadn't been taught what is, um, you know, best practice in how children learn to read. And I had to do a lot of digging that year in terms of professional learning and reading to upskill myself in knowing how to teach him. Um, somehow I bumbled my way through every spare minute I worked with him. Um, and now, and by the end of the year, he was reading what was the the book of the day, which was Goosebumps. I don't know if you remember mm, that. I, I do um, remember Goosebumps, one of my yeah. favorites growing up. Yes. Um, and he was reading that by the end of the year. So to go from just wow. knowing a few words to, to that, um, not with amazing fluency, but he was understanding what he was reading and his challenging behaviors went down and his confidence went up. And mm. you know, I talk when I talk about him, I think that, yes, I taught him to read that year. Well you know, as, as good as we can get in a year, like that was pretty massive improvement, but really I was the one that did the learning that year. I felt, um, because that just set my, you know, my traje trajectory for my career, I suppose, mm. in ensuring that I worked towards every child being an effective reader, writer and speller. Um, so yeah, so then that brings me to literacy impact. So, um, yeah, I just love it. I just love it. <laughs> Yeah, I love that story because, you know, a lot of what you're building at the moment came from your uh, your experience, right, working in the traditional education sector and being aware, right, that not, not everything was as supportive as it could be to where students are today, right? Because a lot of times, especially in academia, it's a lot of tools and resources for from years and years ago that isn't always adapted to the future of learning, 
as well, or yes. things don't get as um, upgraded, right? Because the education system sort of rolls by with the same thing that they do over and over again every year. And, you know, you took mm. that that situation that was hard to deal with, but as an initiative to change the game in the education mm -hmm. industry. Like, you know, you saw a problem and you said, even if I, I can't fix it at this level, being an employee at the school, what I can do is having the freedom to create a new solution and support mm -hmm. my fellow peers, right? Change, be a change maker in the industry that I do love, but not right staying in the position that doesn't allow me, right? To do it the way yeah. that I think could really work. And that's such a beautiful origin story to a, a purpose, mm -hmm. right? To what you're doing today. Um, and talking about academia, you know, I work with a lot of people that are, you know, professors, principals, teachers that sometimes feel like when they first start a business, they're so used to that. Um, I guess part of it is also perfectionism. It's like if you released a paper, you know, in university, you have to be like cross-checked by a bunch of sources and people. So mm -hmm. they don't sort of have that. Yeah, that freedom to like just express. This is what I'm frustrated about. This is what I'm annoyed about. <laughs> in the industry. So there's a fear behind, oh God, what are my peers going to say about me? You know, because that matters a lot in the academia world, right? Uh, and sometimes I find that, yeah, teachers and people from those occupations find it kind of stuck a bit in the beginning of making things really perfect or feeling like they have the status or credential to be able to do what they do, because a lot of their career so far has, you know, sort of had to link to those things to be successful. So I, mm. I kind of want to learn like no more, or I probably do know because I coached you in the beginning, but I wanted you to share like your own journey of like before when you decided that, or this idea was percolating in your head about doing this business, what were some mm. of the sort of stuck points that you might've had to go, oh, I'm not sure if I'm ready or am I good enough even to do this work? And what mm. prompted you to, even search for support and then kind of landing on, you know, 90 day launch and, and, and working with me. Yeah. Uh, such a good question. And um, I talked to a, a mentor, um, a principal of my previous school. I was a deputy principal about this and, and we were chatting about, so this is what I want to do. He says, a hundred percent this, we need this out there. Um, and I think you would do amazing in this, but I don't, I'm wondering how, um, we how how people would find you. He said, I don't know how how people would know about it. And so it got me thinking and I just kind of thought, you know, like I had so many questions. It was like, yes, I had belief in myself, uh, but there was doubt, of course. Um, but how, where do I start? Um, and what do I focus on? What part of literacy and leadership do I focus? Do I focus on one particular thing or do I focus on specifically around learning difficulty so there was all these things going around in my head I just felt really muddled and I think I must have googled um you know something around you know starting uh literacy consulting or something like that and I stumbled across you and that's when I saw this 90 day launch and I could see that it was the roadmap I needed I needed to know exactly what do I do first and what do I focus on first because I can get kind of quite overwhelmed quite quickly um and you know you're in excitement mode and you know you want to make you want to do this but you know where do you start and so for me 90 day launch gave me that very clear path about and I knew that I had belief in you that you could make help me make it happen um so for me it took it took um took all the question the doubt out of my mind um it, it just gave me right this is where you start you know and I loved how you talked about um you know finding your um not your golden zone what do you call it the, company, your sweet the, spot. The, your, the sweet spot about <laughs> looking at you know what your the golden zone what your um you know what your strengths are what your passions are and and just and really refining it down um, and I think a lot of the steps and the modules for you was about, you know, you have this idea, okay, but drill down further till you get down to that niche. Um, and for me, that was, I wouldn't be where I am in the business if that wasn't for, for 90 day launch and you Lydia, because it just took the questioning out of it. It just gave me clarity that I needed. Mm. Um, and, and yeah, and then here I am, you know, a year later. So, um, 
yeah, it was it was a game changer for me, the 90 day launch, I have to say. And, and it, I think one of the beautiful things about the 90 day launch experience is as much as I'm the main coach of the show in a way, right, of the the the, the creator of the roadmap, mm. what's sort of the beautiful extra bonus, I think, that comes from this group, like before this call, we were talking about another uh, 90 day launch member, Melissa, right, being a team member for you at the moment as well, helping you with a lot of things that you're not good at doing in your business and yes. finding talent and other geniuses to do your non-genius zone right tasks and activities and you know it's been really beautiful to see you grow on your own because being a solopreneur is not easy um and learning how to you know deal with that having a solopreneur business and choosing what to prioritize i think was a lot of the work we you know did mm -hmm. together and then being able to also enroll other humans into supporting you in the growth of your business because mm -hmm. you are at the stage of God, I am so busy now. <laughs> Before it was about finding clients. And then now it's about, mm -hmm. I've got the clients and now actually I need some headspace to live my life and some more systems yeah. to organize mm -hmm. what I'm doing day to day so that things don't feel like I'm in a hustle zone from year one, right? Yeah. And you have a network of people to tap into at the community to find that help as well. Um, mm -hmm. Now I want to talk a little bit about some parts of the roadmap and what's been significant, you know, for you that you think if you go down, you know, the next last year, year and a half, what really sort of helped kickstart, you know, your business, get you your first few clients, get you some recognition uh, for your work. Um, I know one of the the you know the things that you and I talked about previously was um, you didn't really want, just like me, you weren't like this social media fanatic, you know, that you wanted to spend hours of your week on social media, but you also understood mm -hmm. that planting some seeds of education to educators was really essential to warm them up to some of these concepts that they're not learning in the school level. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and so talk us through um, what's been some significant milestone moments that or shifts that happen in your business that really help to sort of propel you towards the success that you currently have in your work? Um, I think I have to say LinkedIn was very good um, for me. I think, you know, being a professional platform, um, I posted a lot of content around, you know, um, this is what effective reading instruction looks like. This is how you would you know, 10 tips for teaching vocabulary instruction. A lot of stuff that, um, you know, educators want to know. And I just, in little bite-sized bits, I was only posting, you know, once a week um, because like you say, I'm not, I'm not a big, big fanatic on social media. Um, and I think that raised some credibility and some um, validation around um, my knowledge and my background as a deputy principal and from there, I had a lot of people reaching out to me for collaborations um, to join advisory groups. Um, I had an author ask me to do a book contract. So um, I'm going to be finish, finishing my draft at the end of this month. So that's Amazing. super exciting. It's been a bucket, bucket moment list of my whole life. I've always, I love <laughs> writing and I've, I've always wanted to write. And so I've taken all of the all the, all of the knowledge about teaching structured literacy and, um, you know, with a leadership hat and a teacher hat um, and I've put it into a book. So that's been, that's been amazing. Um, I think also in that first year where I kind of was offline and, and, you know, building the business and having the coaching, I, you know, I say, you know, it was basically in May, 2021, I had a dream and I had a Lydia, I said to my husband last <laughs> night and, and that was it. And that, and and then, and now, you know, a year later, I'm, I'm super, super happy with the business. Um, and I would advise anyone to get a business coach. You know, I think if you're, you want to be an athlete, you have a coach. If you were playing a sporting team, you have a coach, you know, in business, you need a coach. Um, and I think, um, you know, those check-ins with you, I was doing one-on-one -on -one coaching. I was doing group coaching and one-on-one -on -one coaching. I think that was super powerful in bringing me back getting back to, you know, what are my goals and really streamlining things. Um, and I, in that first year, as I was saying, I, I developed a lot of content. So I developed, you know, free resources for teachers that I could see a gap um, that was needed, like a morphology kit, um, a response to intervention kit for schools. Um, and I think that was, you know, I, I also developed a website, um, uh, later I did but then I've had to redo it so 
for anyone starting, I would heed um, Lydia's warning, don't do a website too soon, which I did. Um, and then I had those freebies on there that people, that teachers or, or leaders could come on and download them. Um, and so I think that was that was a big shift. Um, I also was approached to join Learning Difficulties Australia. Um, and that was again through LinkedIn and also me attending professional learning. Um, and so I'm now on their council. So that was an amazing um, opportunity. Um, and, you know, I guess I hadn't ever, I'd always thought that it'd be lovely to be on that. Um, but had I not been asked and had I not been, vi you know, um, visible, then that may not have happened. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to think. Oh, the other thing that was a big shift was a free two-hour online workshop online professional learning yes that um, was the one start. that that got you about like 600 000, 600 people right signed yes. up for that that yes 700 people yeah um and then from there a lot of people said you know well, can you do some more around this with our whole school not just me or can we do some small group coaching with a team of teachers so mm. um that was definitely a really great shift um and you know um and when you're passionate about it, um, it's it's not work. So, um, yeah, I think that they're probably the main shifts. I'm trying to think, was there something else? Um, no, I think that's probably the main ones, the collaboration. Yeah. I mean, I think from yeah. even hearing back, um, I remembered all those moments that were happening for you. And when mm. you got the book deal, like, you know, there's so many little yeah. celebrations every time we spoke. Um, but it, it will, and, and you're so right. So you, you sort of mentioned it, you know, when you said it um, about if I wasn't visible, I wouldn't have had access to these opportunities. Right. And mm. I think that's such a big message, I think, for people to hear, because a lot of people sometimes think that I have to have it all together and have the perfect mm. business, the perfect offerings, oh. the perfect brand positioning for me to start yeah. even sharing my perspective around mm -hmm. my industry, right? And you and I kind of talked about that in the beginning where actually the only responsibility you have, um, it's not really to sell anything on social media, it's really to just impart your wisdom upon what mm -hmm. you're observing around the tools you've been learning that you're generously sharing, right? Mm -hmm. um, and most importantly, you as an educator, your marketing approach should not be about creating dance videos or memes or TikTok videos, you know, that are entertaining and looks good on social media, but it was actually about how are you, how are you actually using your special genius zone as a teacher to teach yeah. other teachers, right? <laughs> so all your content had that heartbeat behind it, which is I'm teaching you what I know, right? I'm teaching you the tools, like exactly what a a teacher in a classroom would do to students, you, you know, reinvented marketing for yourself in such a way that instead of just making quotables or things that feel sort of um, not in your, you know, sphere of interest to create as marketing copy or content, you, all you did was really focused on arming teachers with tools, right? Mm -hmm. And if they were, you know, changed by those tools and they believed in the tools or improved a little win from that one mm -hmm. guide you gave them or one workshop you gave them, then you mm -hmm. trust that they would take the next step with you, which mm -hmm. they usually have done if they're ready for it, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was so great to witness you just focusing on that versus like, you know, I don't know, complicating a sales and marketing funnel and mm -hmm. making things, you know, just complex. Yeah, it doesn't have yeah. to be that way. All, you know, no, all people need is you to be passionate about your work and for you to share often. Mm -hmm about what you're mm. learning, what you're observing, what you're seeing happening that could be changed more positively in the industry, mm. right? So that's such a, a yeah. good example of that for you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, what is next for you? Um, you know, what what what, what are you ex most excited for in the brand new year of 2023? Now that you've gone through the growing pains and, you know, of, of launching a baby business to now it becoming a toddler, <laughs> some legs <laughs> to walk on its own a little bit. Uh, what's the next chapter for you and your business? Um, well, I think I actually have a lot of travel this year, um, which I was only planning on maybe doing, you know, three traveling things this this year, but I've already I've already got two in the first month and next month <laughs> is three. Um, so, you know, I love um you know, when schools reach out and they say, look, we'd like to about the science of reading or, you know, structured literacy, how that actually looks in a 50 minute block 
book or whatever it might be. Um, and so I'm just loving working, working with schools, either via Zoom, um, you know, face to face. Um, so that's kind of just continuing. Um, the Leading Literacy Impact Masterclass has been um, really great for schools, particularly schools in rural areas um, or, you know, that want to do some online learning. So they have the online modules um, in leading whole school change in a school. So it's all about, you know, building momentum and then sustaining the momentum. You know, a one-day training is not going to move the needle, whereas if I upskill school school leaders over time, over a year with co coaching, just like, you know, you coach us, um, then we're going to be able to embed it across the school and benefit students for years to come. So I really just want to keep refining Leading Literacy Impact, um, which is a year-long um, uh, for, for leadership teams. Um, I'm hopefully get my book will come out yes. um, in the next few months. Um, I'm still working with lead, um, uh, Learning Difficulties Australia. Um, I'm the editor of the Bulletin, which comes out three times a month, a year. So that also keeps me busy. But again, I love that I can, you know, take knowledge and, and papers and research and put it straight into a bulletin for teachers that, that mm. are at the, you know, on the front line. Um you know, to, to help make a difference for their students. So just more, more of this um, and, you know, just more streamlining, I think. I've just got to, um, you know, know my limits as well. I still have two young children um, and so making sure that I make lots of time for them. Um, yeah, so hopefully other presentations um, that are kind of, you know, uh, for charities and not pro yeah, uh, not for profits um so yeah just more more of the same of that and also i know you're getting more support to grow to that next level because the more you take on yes. the more support we usually need so i'm really excited to keep working with you on that actually because we work together this yeah. year as well <laughs> yeah and also i need to a shout out to melissa from mks virtual who i found through you um she's just been amazing the last couple of months and it's just um, Melissa's support just helps me stay in flow um, so I can really focus on doing my consulting, working with um, principals, working with teachers, mm. uh, presenting. And um, Melissa takes care of a lot of the, the social media stuff or the admin type things, um, online, online forms, literacy surveys for schools. Uh, she takes care of a lot of all that stuff for me so I can just focus on um, what, I, what I really love to do. And um, yeah. She's so That's wonderful. Cool. And actually, whoever's watching this video, we did a full interview with Melissa also <laughs> because yeah, she's an alumni of Nine Day Launch. So you can hear about her story um, and we'll put a link on the blog so that you can see that story from Melissa's journey of launching an introvert friendly business, which is a great topic for people. Um, well, I would love to end by uh, making sure that, you know, people who are watching this video that maybe are in the educator, uh, education sector or know someone that could really benefit from your services and your courses, um, where could they find you and, and what's sort of the best place to connect with you? Hmm. So um, literacyimpact.com.au is my website. Um, I do have a monthly newsletter that I um, provide updates around uh, new research or papers or tips um, for best practice in literacy um, and learning difficulties. So that's a good place. Um, also Facebook, Literacy Impact Educational Services, um, Twitter, um, and Instagram, literacy underscore impact. Um, so yeah, the newsletter is probably a good a good starting point. Um, and and LinkedIn's also you know all the socials I could try and you know put the put the same content on. Um, but yeah, and um, I also offer a thirty minute uh, complimentary um, uh, what's it called complimentary call through my website if a consult. So if schools do want to talk about how I can support them, um, then, you know, happy to, happy to have a chat. Yes, we'll put all the links as well um, so that people can easily click on them and connect with you in whichever platform that works for them. And I, I know because we worked on your newsletters together, like the way that Julie gives you a newsletter is also so informative. It is like you're reading a bulletin, you know, something that's like the next thing you should know about to write in the future of learning. So just even being a part of her email list, if you're a teacher and educator, it really gives you some innovative ideas about how to teach the in the classroom uh, level. So um, thank you for all the wonderful work you do, honestly, for parents, for the future generation of kids. Like it is such, I love it when business ideas 
like truly impact a problem that's really going to be important to solve in the world. And you are certainly uh, one of the, you know, biggest advocates for learning with children. And I think, you know, I, I hope many more schools adopt, right, this new way of, of teaching. Um, and thank you for the beautiful work that you put out in the world. Oh, thank you, Lydia. Thank you. Thanks, Julie. <laughs>